Look at what we have here today. What wonderful freaking lineup, but it is all about the R1M. This fine gentleman right here is allowing me to ride his beautiful beast. So I obviously am going to let him ride the RC4 1100 factory. This is the first time on an R1, especially an R1M. I'm very excited. Let's do this. The exhaust note is so good. Listen to that pop. Like it's so extraordinarily loud. I'm not sure how much I'm going to talk while doing this. Just kind of enjoy the views. The quick shifter sound feels really solid on the upshift. Downshift is a little clunky. Not too bad though. Oh, the sound this thing makes come up the canyon. We're going to get back and talk about it a little bit. This beast is exactly that, and we're gonna go over some things. Whew. All right, so we just got off the R1M, and I tell you what, there's a lot to kind of process with that bike. You know, uh, obviously it's not around me, so I didn't get to do the normal walk around all the sweet little shots that I normally do, but you know what, it's, it's more about how that bike felt. And it, R1 has been a bike that I've actually been wanting to ride now for a while, and to actually get a chance to ride the R1M, you know, the hardcore model of it, it was fantastic. You know, I, I've liked the R1 from a long time. It was the R1 Raven with the black and red accent. Gorgeous bike. It's one of the ones that actually got me into wanting a leader bike or a thousand cc motorcycle. The R1M, the motor is probably its parting piece. The thing that really stands out the most to me, you know, the sound of it. <laughs> with, with that aero exhaust, it never shuts up. I almost want to put it in sixth gear and just shut it up because I'm tired of hearing it. Uh, but even though that it makes that noise, it's still a fantastic sound. I think the RC4 1100 factory and the R1M are probably two of the best sounding bikes out on the market. Like, you know, I love Ducatis, but I don't think anything compares to those two sounds. They're very distinct. They're almost relatively similar, surprising, considering, you know, V4 to an inline four, but that cross plane crank is amazing. Other than the motor, what else stood out to me? and the throttle response it was super smooth very linear it was a little more harsh than i was expecting uh, i i think i can't remember what mode we're in i'm i'm usually the hardest core mode so that's probably part of why the throttle response is so sharp because it was the hardcore setting i think was it b mode or c mode a mode i don't know <laughs> i should probably look that up more but uh, you guys can tell me in the comments which one it was but it was very responsive it was very sharp and a great linear feel to it. And I enjoyed that. It made the bike very easy to ride in that aspect. The way the R1M handles and turns in is very intuitive. It's very easy. You don't really fight the machine. You don't really feel much weight with it. And it makes it want to lean over very predictably and makes you very confident when you lean over. It's a fantastic cornering machine and you know, I didn't push it a ton and I'll get to why I didn't push it that much aside from it not being my bike. But the way that it carried speed through the corners is really what I liked about the R1M. It's, it's corner entry and mid corner speed was rather nice. And again, that's street riding. That's not on the track or anything like that. So we don't want to go, I don't wanna go too far into it because well, obviously I haven't experienced it. So we're not going that far. But those are three of the biggest things that I really enjoyed about the R1M was the motor the throttle response and the chassis, the way it handled, the way it turned in and all that, all that aspect it made the bike feel amazing. I can see why a lot of people like them. Now we'll get to the downside of it. There are a few things that I really didn't like about the R1M 
And because we talked about the motor and the speed that that bike can carry, there's another aspect of it, and that is braking. I, I didn't like how the brakes felt on the R1M. It, they had a very strong feel initially, at least what I thought was a strong feel. But as I actually would start to squeeze, it was hard and then like, okay, I need more power, I need more power. And it just, it didn't give me that confidence that I would have expected from a bike that can carry as much speed as it does. And that sort of made me actually back off a good bit because I, I just wasn't confident that those brakes were gonna slow me down to the speed that I felt comfortable at. So I just kept it under that speed. Considering its performance, it needs to have brakes that match and it just doesn't, it falls way short from its competitors for sure. Even BMW that doesn't even use Brembo's has better feeling, stronger brakes to, in my opinion. Now the next thing is the seating position. I've ridden a lot of very track focused hardcore bikes like the HP4 Race, my RC4 1100 Factory, the CBR 1000 RR RSP. You know, they're very aggressive bikes and I'm used to the crunch and the harshness, but the R1, you feel like you're almost over the, the handlebar. It's a very forward like feeling machine where you sit on your own top and forward. What I notice when I try to brake hard when I'm in that position is I'm already over the handlebars and now when I brake, I'm even further and you have to really brace yourself differently. And I wasn't too keen on that position. Like I'm not sure how my buddy rode that around all the time because it was, it was harsh. It was not easy to do. It's really that hard lean that's you just over the bars that I'm not a fan of. And it was it was actually tiring to ride the, I think, 25 minutes that I rode it. Even though I'd say that that riding position is harsh, the suspension wasn't uh, for what it is. It's actually rather plush. Surprisingly, I figured it would just be godly jarring, and it wasn't. The owner put um, those Rizoma, I think, stealth mirrors on. And they look so cool when they're, you know, tucked away for speed. But when you flip them up, they're, they're kind of terrible. Like they're, they're this big and you can't articulate them one way or the other. They can only flip like this. You really can't see all that much. And again, because of the position you're in, it makes them almost, almost useless. Uh, again, for a track, fine. But for the street, they're, they're not that usable. They look great though, I tell you what. So many parts that he put on that R1M were just stunning. All the carbon fiber. I wish I could have done that nice B-roll that I normally do because it was a stunning machine. That's really it. I really enjoyed the opportunity to ride the R1 and the R1M specifically. It's been a bike that I've been trying to get my hands on for a while now. I really wanted to see, you know, why people loved it, why people hated it how it compared to my Italian bikes that I love, obviously. And, you know, it's, it's a fun machine. It's relatively easy to ride. It's not super intimidating, even though it does have a good bit of power. The brakes, obviously, that's what really needs to come the next generation of R1s. It, they're just not there. The electronics, I didn't really play with them too awfully much, but it felt old. The bike feels long in the tooth, as it were. It needs a, another update and not just an update where we just put a little different firmware in it. I think it needs a pretty substantial uh, update to the machine. I don't think the chassis, the motor is brilliant, so there's really no need to change that. And the brakes, it's just, it's just the biggest, it's just the biggest downside to that bike. And one of the things that uh, it kills me because everything else feels great as far as the chassis and the way it leans and the way the throttle responds, but. If I can't trust the brakes, I, I have a problem riding a bike like that fast. But I hope you guys enjoy this particular review. It's a little bit different than what I'm usually doing. Uh, I don't know how many more times I'll do it this particular way, but if y'all enjoy it, you know, give me a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and hit that little bell for notifications when I do upload because it's a little sporadic at the moment with my school schedule. I'm trying to get as much as I can out, but that takes precedence over anything else. So with that, you all have a good one. I'm out.